Well, good morning, officially, from me. This is a new day. It's a good day because we serve a good God. There's a very popular verse that you've probably heard a time or two or perhaps many more times than that. And it's possible that when you hear this verse, you might be tempted to hear it but not really let it sink in. Um, But this morning, I'm going to encourage you to let it go deep. In this season in our lives and in the life of this church, I believe that we need to live with this promise from God. It's from Psalm 118, verse 24. And it says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. There's such intention in those words. Right? Because the truth is that God has made this day. He has made it for a purpose. He has brought it to fruition. And we get to have this choice to rejoice in what he has done. To rejoice every single day that God has brought us to this place for this time. And it's good. It's good. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you are a good God. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. And Lord, as we step into this new season, Lord, I thank you that you are the one that is leading us. We are not on this journey alone. God, I thank you that every time that we come to your word, you speak to us through it. So Jesus, today as we turn into our Bibles, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to us. Lord, that we would come away with truth from you. In Jesus' name, amen. So several years ago, Tyler and I decided to take a road trip with our kids to a surprise destination. And it was a lot of fun. We love a good road trip in our family. Uh, We love seeing new places. We love discovering together. We just love the adventure of it all. But this surprise trip was going to be truly epic. As we got closer to our destination, we asked the kids who were very young at the time, I think Tinica was three, Caleb was not in the picture for many more years, Annika was probably, well, she would have been five and Josh would have been seven. And we turned to them and we said, hey guys, we want you to guess where we're going on this surprise trip. And Tinica, my three-year-old at the time, had a great guess. She said, Candyland. I'm like, no, not quite, but that would be fun. Josh said, a famous gold mine. Hmm. And Annika said, the exotic destination of Lethbridge. (laughs) None of them were right. Josh was the closest. Though we had to drive about 16 hours over the course of two days, and we just kept telling the kids, it's all going to be worth it. Just look out your windows, find the waterfalls, the majestic mountains, the beautiful scenery, and trust that where we're going is good. But then as we got a few hours away from our destination, we kind of had to pivot because the signs everywhere on the side of the road started showing pictures of where we were going. So we're like, stop looking outside. Stay focused here. We passed out iPads, just whatever we could do, right, to keep the kids' focus and attention off of the road and into the car. We didn't want that surprise to be spoiled. But then as we got just within a few minutes of our destination, we had been told that when we drove through this certain tunnel and around a bend, that we would see it. So we took away the iPads, we took away the distractions, And we told the kids, get ready, look up. And as sure as we were told, when we came out of that tunnel and around the corner, we looked up and we saw the magnificent carvings of Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. It was breathtaking. And one of our favorite memories, I think, as a family, this epic road trip that ended with this beautiful surprise. The journey of discovery and surprises that we got to embark on together. As I was praying and preparing for today's message, I just kept hearing the word journey, that God wanted us to learn from his word about journeying with him, what that looks like, and what we need for the journey that he's calling each of us to. 
So this morning, we're going to be in the book of Genesis, chapter 12. We're going to be looking at that chapter and some other passages and, and study the surprise journey that God called Abraham to. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. And we're going to start right away from verse 1. It says, The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Okay, so here we have Abram. He's minding his own business. Have ever, any of you ever been minding your own business when God kind of interrupts you and says, hey, I've got a plan? It's not always fun when that happens. But Abram was minding his own business when God basically interrupts his life, and he tells him, you're going to leave your country, leave your family, leave your close relatives, everything that you have known, and I want you to go somewhere new. I want you to leave what you've known and go to this land that's a mystery. It's an unknown. And you're doing it at 75 years old. Get up, leave everything familiar behind, and instead step into the unfamiliar. Step into the new. Step into the surprise. See, the interesting thing about this call of Abram is that, as far as we can tell, Abram wasn't looking for it. He wasn't looking for change. He wasn't the one who called out to God and said, hey, I'm kind of bored here. What new thing do you have for me? No, this was God pursuing Abram. God took the initiative to call Abram. God chose him. He chose to lead him to something new. And so for just a moment, church, I want you to put yourself in Abram's place. In that moment when God called him from everything he knew into something different, something unexpected, something unfamiliar, how would that type of a call of God make you feel? Now, for some of us, the prospect of that surprise, the road trip with the unknown destination, that's exciting. It's exhilarating. There's a bit of a rush. What's coming around the corner? I can't wait to see it. My son is very much that way, looking for adventure. What's next? As Steve said, we were missionaries uh, for a number of years, and when we first moved back to Canada, we counted it the other day. I think we lived in eight homes in the course of tw- over the course of 12 months. And uh, when we moved to Kimberley, We were there for a couple of months, and Josh came to us. He was young at the time, I think six years old. And he said, okay, this has been awesome. Where are we going next? It was like he was used to just that surprise, that adventure. So for some people, this type of a call, it's exhilarating. It's exciting. But others of us would tend to land in the camp of a bit of dread. Wait, what? God? I have a million questions for you. First of all, where are we going? What do you mean you're going to show me later? Why are we going? When are we going to get there? Who's going with us? How is this all going to work? As followers of Jesus, guess what? He often calls us in a similar way. All through the Bible, we see God calling people to step out, to follow him. And usually, he doesn't give a whole lot of detail. He calls, and he expects a response. And that response that he's hoping for, that he wants us to lead with, to step in with, is a response of faith. Faith that is needed. It is so imperative in those situations where we don't have the answers, 
We don't get to study the roadmap ahead of time. Rather, we have to choose to trust that the one who has called us has a purpose, and he's leading us to something good. That's the type of faith that Abram had. That's why Abram is commended in Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 8, we are told that it was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as in his, his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. All Abram had was the voice of God calling him to follow him to something new. And he did. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4 says, Abram departed as the Lord had instructed. He heard the call, and he responded by stepping into that journey with the unknown destination. So let's continue reading from verse 5. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp behind, beside the oak at Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to his west and Ai to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages toward the Negev. So Abram, he's now on this journey with God because he heard the call and he chose to follow him. But now we begin to see that Abram wasn't the only one taking action steps. Because God was not only calling him and leading him, but he was making these beautiful promises to Abram all along the journey. Revealing to him more of who he is. So that Abram could continue to draw closer to him in faith and trust. What a beautiful God we serve. God told him that he would make Abram into a great nation that he would bless him, that he would make him a blessing to others. He tells him here that he will give the land to his descendants. See, there's a plan. And although Abram doesn't know the whole plan, he doesn't get to see the whole picture. His very good God, from the beginning, is revealing bits of that plan, promising him that good will come from this. And not only for him, but for those who come after him as well. Isn't it comforting to know that we can put our faith in a God who knows the future? That we can trust that he is holding the road map. He does know the final destination. He knows all the stops along the way. He knows all the curves in the road, all the bumps, all the hills, all the valleys. This isn't a purposeless road trip. He has a plan, and now he's revealing that to Abram in these small little bits and pieces. So what is the response that Abram has? His response is worship. His ongoing obedience, faith, and trust lead him closer to God, and he responds by building altars to God and spending time in worship. Worshiping in the midst of change and unknowns. Abram wasn't forced to worship, but he was learning that this God who called him can be trusted. This God was good. I want to read to you an excerpt from a teaching called A Time of Altars by Pastor Jack Hayford. He says this, Abraham's building of the altar represents his saying, I'm accepting a promise, understanding that this is different than what I thought it was going to be, but it's also something that I believe God can bring to pass. I trust you, Lord, that you will make it work. Be encouraged to let your heart receive the promise and embrace wherever you are right now, even if it seems much different 
than what you hoped for. If the Lord is there with you, he can make it work, but it will require the building of an altar on your part to say, I'm willing, and to trust that God is greater than your preconception of how it's supposed to be. Man, I love that. Are we embracing where God has us, even if it's different than what we thought? Even if we end up at Mount Rushmore instead of Candyland? Abram seemed to know that if God was there, if God was leading, then that's where he wanted to be, no matter what. So Abram builds these altars, and then later in his journey, he actually passes back by them, and he was able to remember God's faithfulness and worship again. Call on the name of God and trust him. Being able to say, as we sang this morning, all my life, God, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so good. Now, it's easy to say God is good when life is good. But what about when the journey that God leads us on gets a little tough? What about those bumpy parts of the ride? Abram had his fair share. Some of them were his own doing, his foolishness and his lack of wisdom, the mistakes that he made, which landed him in sketchy situations. And I just want to say that brings me so much comfort because Abram didn't always get it right right? He didn't always walk forward in that same type of faith. Sometimes he did things in his own. He tried to rush God's plan, and he got in a whole lot of trouble, right? But there were also some times when God was giving Abram opportunities to trust him more, to increase his faith, and those were some incredibly challenging moments on his journey, specifically when God told Abram to sacrifice his son Isaac, the miracle son, the son of promise, the son he had been praying for, the son he had been hoping for, waiting for. Now, this is a very challenging part of Abram's story, but I want to focus on a couple of points here. So we're going to look at Genesis chapter 22, and starting in verse 1. It says, Sometime later God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the word wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. So God again here calls Abram to something. But this time it wasn't something that was going to be easy. This time it was something that would cost him the one thing he didn't want to lose. But again, when God called, he responded with obedience. It says that he got up early the next morning to set off on this journey with his son. He didn't delay his obedience. I want to be a little bit more like that. Because I can tell you that if God told me to do something like this, setting the alarm for first thing in the morning would not be anywhere on my radar. I would be running. I would be hiding. I would be, whoa, I'm not ready for that, Jesus. But here Abraham gets up first thing in the morning to set off on this journey with his son. 
And then he responds again in faith when he told his servants that he and Isaac would go up the mountain together and then they would return. And again, when Isaac asked where the lamb was for the sacrifice, Abraham chose faith. God will provide. And he did. See, Abraham had an opportunity here to respond with fear, to respond with failure, or just to abandon the cause altogether. But he chose faith. Even though the ask would cost him his most precious son, he still chose faith. Faith over fear. Faith instead of failure. Faith to step forward in obedience. For each of us this morning, I know that God is calling us. He could be calling you today to tell your neighbors about Jesus. He could be calling you to step out on mission here in Nanaimo or perhaps around the world. He could be calling you to a new place, a new season, a new journey. I don't know what the specific call is, but I do know that he's calling each one of us. So what will we do? How do we respond to that call? I want to give you three encouragements from Abram's journey that will help us as we respond to the call of God on our lives. First, we see that Abram heard God's call and he followed. He followed into the unknown. No road map, no final destination. He didn't have the beautiful map leading to Taco Bell, right? Just come and follow, step out, and he did. See, the easiest part of our response is to follow. Think about it for a moment. When you're following someone or or when you're the passenger on the road trip, what happens? They lead. You get to kind of sit back, relax, let them take you where they're going. They drive the car, right? All you need to do is get in. You step in. And allow God to lead you. When you tune your ears to hear God, when you're listening, when he interrupts your life and says, come and follow, I encourage you to get in there with him. Go on the journey with God. Step into that unknown with the God you know. See, where he's taking you may be a mystery, but he is not. A mystery. We can know him and we can trust him and we can trust he has been faithful before. He has me now and he has my future. I want to be where he's going. Hear his call and follow him. Secondly, Abram responded with worship. He worshiped along the journey. He kept his eyes on the God who called him, and then he built altars to say, God, I trust you. I worship you. See, when you are on your journey of following God, remember that the same God who called you to this is the same God who was faithful to you in the past. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So in the waiting, in the unknown, along the journey, Worship him. So hear and follow. Worship him. And then finally, choose faith over fear, as Abram did. He had many opportunities to be afraid, and at times he did give in to that fear. But the closer he got to God, the more that he journeyed with God, he was able to choose faith to step out in faith that is almost too great to comprehend. But that type of unwavering faith in the moment of great difficulty is what comes when we keep saying yes to God. Sometimes what God calls us to, it's not easy. It's not easy to say yes in the flesh. But the more that we follow God, the more that we say yes to him, every yes gets a little bit easier. Not because the ask is easier, 
but because we have seen and lived in that goodness and that faithfulness of God. And we know that we can trust him. So church, today I want to encourage us to be people in this season and in the season to come to be people who hear and follow God, who worship him along the journey, and who continue to choose faith over fear. Would the worship team come? As a church, we are embarking on a new journey together. A journey that God has called us on, and we have said yes to him. We don't know what's coming around the corner. We don't know what magnificent things will come because we said yes, because we chose today to follow. But I do know that the God that we serve is faithful. He is good, and he has a plan. He has a surprise through the tunnel and around the corner that will blow us away as we continue to step in and follow him. Amen? So would you stand with us? We're going to worship as we go on this journey together.